Alrighty guys, so by the title of this video, you guys can already assume what it's about. I'm not perfect. People make mistakes, things happen, accidents happen. This one just ended with my car being totaled. So yes, I totaled my 2009 Z06. So story time here we go um without further ado i want to get some background and all that stuff i <laughs> i was going to vegas and i the day before this trip um i was prepping the car you know just for a long trip change the oil um check all the tire pressures rotated the tires no you can't rotate the tires on these cars what am i saying um yeah so just pretty much changed oil cleaned it washed it made it look good because i was trying to flex hard in vegas you know in las vegas strip open those exhausts and just give it a couple of reps yeah that didn't go to plan <laughs> anyways so yeah i'm gonna put some photos over this video and talk through it so without further ado here we go into the story so like i said the whole goal was for me to get to Vegas somehow and I wanted to take my car so that's exactly what we did and I have had done this before with this car and I did it without a hiccup like this is when I probably first got it the week after buying this car I literally took it to Vegas for you know just a trip so I knew this car could do it and there was no issues you know with it before so I had no doubts that it could do it again um why would I, I guess so like I said, did all the prep work. The day of the trip came, started heading out, and the trip was pretty non-eventful. Nothing had happened. You know, we were just chugging along. And then we finally get to Barstow. And in Barstow, I was, you know, on the 15, just driving, nothing to worry about. And I did see in front of me that um, a semi-truck had... Uh, not lost a tire but a tire had exploded and a bunch of debris went everywhere and of course you know like I couldn't avoid everything so I did avoid the the bigger pieces but I did run over some of the smaller pieces and they went under my car and made a big it made a noise but like it wasn't you know a noise big enough for me to get like like hey I should pull over and check the car and I was in Barstow and it was like 112 degrees when I was going so I checked all my gauges I had oil pressure you know cooling was fine temps were fine oil pressure was fine oil temps were fine gas gauge was you know right where it needed to be there was no re battery voltage was good checking all the gauges there's no reason for me to think otherwise like hey I should probably pull over to check the car um so you know kept going kept chugging along and then i think i drove maybe another you know hour hour and a half all the way to the point where i finally crossed state line into nevada and once i cross into nevada it's usually like my common practice or our group's common practice to um pull over and um get food and so the first stop after crossing state line from California to Nevada is actually Prim. And Prim is like known as like the stop, I guess, for people, you know, because some people travel quite a distance to get to Vegas. So you kind of stop at Prim just to like take a breather, relax. And for in our case, um, we stopped at Prim for food. And our the restaurant in particular that we stopped on was Carl's Jr., Love Carl's Jr., by the way. And, yeah, so stopped at Prim to get food. I always liked stopping at Prim because Prim is, like, the Vegas I, Vegas I knew growing up as a child. Like, we always just stay at Buffalo Bills. I always thought this was Vegas. But, you know, as I grew up, I found out, like, this was, like, little mini Vegas, cheap Vegas. Because we would always stay here, you know, eat at the buffets, and then we would make the trip into the actual strip of Vegas when we were little and I get it because when I was little I really couldn't do anything in Vegas so my parents just saved money by staying there I enjoyed all the, you know 
the amenities that Little Vegas had to offer. And so it's always just like a common thing for me to stop at Prim. So ate at Prim, you know, saw the little sights there. And I was like, hey, it's probably, you know, it's a good time to leave now. Let's get back in the car and then head off towards Vegas again. And this is where pretty much my story takes its turn for the worse. And I've played this scenario or this event over and over in my head. And like, I can't think of any other way that what happened happened without this. So when we were back in Barstow and I told you about that tire that had exploded on the freeway, you know, all the debris were everywhere and how I ran over some pieces. Well, one of the pieces that had ran over actually hit my oil cooler and had not punctured it, but damaged it in a way where it was still able to hold oil because you know on the freeway the ls7 is not it's like cruising on the freeway the ls7 is pretty much idling i think like at 75 to 80 miles an hour it's like at 1500 to like 1700 rpms and it's building a maximum maybe like 25 28 oil pounds of oil pressure so you know no strain on the motor or no strain on the oil pump was happening at all so guess what when you get back onto the freeway and you start to accelerate to the free rate speed guess what happens with acceleration and yep you guessed it my oil cooler punctured as I got into fourth gear on the freeway not punctured my oil cooler burst as i got onto the freeway in fourth gear and i was already up to like 75 miles 75 miles an hour in the left in the farthest left lane and and you can tell like how flimsy the these oil coolers are if you guys remember back in one of my videos when i um was drilling or not installing the oil cooler back in place how one of the bolts actually punctured it like with ease so yeah, that's just to show you like how like fragile these oil coolers are. So pretty much as I got onto the freeway, you know, accelerated to freeway speed, made my way up to the fourth lane. Yeah, that that acceleration and that build in oil pressure actually ruptured the oil cooler to the point where all the oil you know, that was running through the motor actually started falling onto the floor and going under my rear tires and you can probably guess what happened after that it's just like driving on ice or on massive amount of water the rear end of the car started you know dancing on me and i was like hmm that's kind of weird like it usually doesn't do this unless i'm on you know the power on throttle so i was like usually the correction for that is simple let off the gas you know the wheel stops spinning car strains out so i let off the gas you know, start holding the steering wheel straight and the rear end is still dancing on me. And at this point, I'm like, dude, what is going on? And then next thing I know, the rear end just totally kicks out on me. We're going sideways, like at 75 miles an hour. I'm I'm starting to go into the dirt. I just remember the, like going into the dirt sideways, sideways, sideways. And then next thing I know, boom, hit the middle divider car car <laughs> car that gets airborne i think go up a little bit and you know come back down and then land so after you know the whole shock of the impact has like finally left me i'm like what just happened like this makes no sense so i get out of the car i'm like looking around and like i can see you know like just parts of my car that have been like destroyed or like just ripped out under from underneath um, all over the freeway and I'm still just like in shock like how the heck did this just happen and then a car pulled over to the side to like kind of you know check up on me and like ask you know what had happened and once like you know we find they find out that I'm okay they're like dude we saw you you know your tail end starts fishing to fish tailing out and then our car started doing the same thing and then we saw you go into the dirt and then our car went into the dirt but like they were still able to get out of the dirt and they said we thought we were gonna crash exactly where you were gonna crash and then then they were like they told me like hey i don't know but like something's on the road back there 
and they said like there's like either oil or water that's making people lose control so i'm like shoot so when they said oil i was like hey actually that makes a lot of sense because like there's no reason for my car just to automatically lose control somehow while i was going straight you know in a straight line at a you know reasonable amount of speed with no steering wheel input so i was like let me let's go check for oil but then i also thought like maybe my tire had to pop for some reason because that's what like would make me think why the car would suddenly lose control in the rear so i went to go check you know my rear right rear side of the car and yeah the, the tire was in fact popped but um that was because that's the side of the car that hit the wall so i was like okay that it probably ruptured from impact and then i kept walking around to the car and then i get to the rear end of the car and that's when it hit me yeah and as you can see in this video the rear end of my car was absolutely covered in oil i'm like what is all of this so i started investigating and started following the oil trail and it led to my front bumper slash you know hood so popped the hood open and i noticed that there in fact there was no oil cooler and that all my oil cooler lines were like exposed and i was like shoot all the oil that they were talking about came from me and so you know i was the one dumping the oil i was the one causing people to like semi lose control yeah i was the one who you know caused myself to lose control and throw myself into the wall it was in fact in my motor spilling all that oil and i tell you what man shoot these tires are brand new on these rims and even brand new tires with like 99 percent thread are no chance to oil yeah so that's what happened you know and then the freaking police came and the officer was super nice about the whole situation he like he even let me stay in his troop his chp trooper his suv as you can see in the photo here because we didn't want to do all the talking outside so i was i was in the back of a cop car for like a good hour and a half while we waited for the tow truck to come and pick it up and yeah that's pretty much the story on how i lost my freaking z06 to a tire and it sucks you know because the insurance totaled it out um and i don't know what i'm gonna do with it yet but yeah um i guess this is where the story ends for that car but i will go ahead and play some other clips that i have on file of me you know just looking at the car and then showing you what is to come to it so uh, enjoy the rest of this video <laughs> guys she lived a good life she lived a good life she lived a good life honestly guys doesn't look that bad but I am very scared to see what's underneath I think I am gonna have to let her go pretty sad as you can see rear of the car is literally covered in oil and the oil cooler that failed which is no longer here with us you can see the lines right there but yeah sad boy hours well boys there she goes two thousand years later all right, ladies and gents, it's been about three weeks since I've driven this car, or since the accident, I should say. Um, just a quick update. We're back at the old pad. DSM days were here. Um, yeah, insurance told it out. They paid me already. Now, I'm just, you know, assessing the car, the damage. As you can see, it doesn't look bad at all. This is where majority of it happened on this side um, pretty much still all good here all good there dude this is very fixable um, I just don't know if I'm gonna fix it the only thing we saw for sure 
broken is this rear upper control arm. I don't know if we can see it. Uh, oh, there it is. Let's see if I can zoom in. There, right there, it's broken. So that's, I think that's the only thing hindering this car from moving besides, you know, a rim and tire. I'm gonna try to turn it on. I have the pretty much serpentine belt disconnected to everything. So, cause I know our radiator is cracked, so I don't want any water uh, flowing to that. And then <laughs> we also lost our air filter. Um, what else? I think that's it. Oh, but yeah, the main thing, the main issue, should I say, before we can turn it on is that we're gonna have to delete the oil cooler lines. So I have an oil cooler block off plate from ICT Billet. Pretty nice design, simple, two bolts, gasket, I mean our O-ring and the block off plate itself. We're gonna take those lines out, block it off, um, put some oil in, cause I know we lost quite a bit and then fire up, hopefully, you know, nothing other than that arises. <sighs> Depending on the motor status is really gonna, you know, determine what I do with this car. But I think I am leaning towards selling it as is. <sighs> I don't know guys, all right. First things first, let's, let's delete these old cooler lines. Okay guys, new day. I had a, you know, take off a day because I went to go charge the battery and the battery was completely dead so I couldn't even reach or recharge it. So I had to buy a new one. But that block off plate is in. Is in. I don't think you guys can see it because of lack of light. But it's somewhere in there. Um, I took out everything that is broken or that was damaged during the accident. Um, took off the serpentine belt so no, none of the accessories will be going. Here is all the damage. We have radiator, condenser, radiator shroud, and then the air intake. Sorry about that, other than that, uh, camera died. Other than that, I think that was the only damage that I see, you know, besides the bumper and the rear control arm. I believe all this stuff was the only thing that was stopping us from starting the car, aside from the battery. I hope nothing is gonna run that's gonna puke out fluid. Here are the oil cooler lines right there, trash. Um, I did loop the trans cooler line right there, you can see it. Because I believe that's gonna start pumping once the motor's on. But other than that, I don't think anything it was anything else was damaged that holds fluids. Put some more oil in it, and I think we are ready for startup. Just gotta hook up the battery and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, so pull the fuse pump fuel pump fuse cranked it over about like 20 times to get some oil pressure build up put the fuse back in now we're gonna go ahead and see if we can crank over I mean like in theory I don't see why it wouldn't turn on cuz nothing happened you know engine wise or knock on wood nothing happened engine wise so oh boy this is scary let's try this we got power Let's see, what kind of lights do we got on? Never lift, of course, yeah. <laughs> service anti-lock brakes, service active handling system. That's probably the right rear wheel that's throwing all these. Service traction system, hatch ajar. Okay, that's it. Let's see if we can get started. Oh, ho, ho. she lives, she lives. Do we have oil pressure? We have oil pressure. Oh God, 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 oh God. She lives, she lives. Check engine light is on. That could be because of the alternator not being hooked up. We're just running on straight battery right now. God, she sounds so good. I've missed this damn car. All right, are we maintaining oil pressure though? We are maintaining oil pressure. That is good, that is good. God. Let's hear that V8. All right, let's check the motor out, check the motor out. Any weird noises, any weird noises? I am not hearing any weird noises. 
Typical LS7 noises. Are we spewing anything? No, that block off plate is working well. No oil being spewed. Everything else looks like it's going. We have a small squeak. It could be that I just hosed down the whole engine bay and blew it off, you know, to clean up all the oil and mess. But I think we got a healthy motor. She lives, boy, she lives. Now I just gotta figure out what I wanna do with this car. All right, let me go turn it off before anything serious happens. Ugh. Alrighty boys, there she goes. New owner. Sold it to the family though. So it's all good. We'll still be seeing this. There goes the vet the last time. She'll be taken care of. You know what that means though? New projects coming ahead.